What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV, and today I'm very excited to be standing in between two legendary vehicles. This is the 2019 Explorer, and we're gonna compare that to this, the 2020 Ford Explorer. This one happens to be the Platinum model, loaded up with every option under the sun. And today we're gonna to show you this vehicle completely, inside out, give you the full walk around, the full review, and give you all of the information you need to know if you're in the market for a new 2020 Ford Explorer. Now, we'll tell you a huge thank, uh, thanks to Dick, uh, our Ford trainer. Ford actually brought this vehicle down to us to train us on the vehicle. And so with that being said, there's a couple of quirks and features on this one because it is a truly a pre-production prototype vehicle. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and do a walk around of the vehicle and show you what this thing is all about. Even though the colors look identical, that color is called White Platinum Tri-Coat. This one is called Star White. It looks identical, and I don't know why they changed the name because it looks like the exact same thing. I'm sure there's a difference there, but it's something that's neat to note. Now, I wanna show you the front end of the vehicle. Now, keep in mind, this vehicle is completely different from the ground up. There is no parts from that 19 model that are used on this 2020 model. And the first thing I wanna show you is you do have a much bigger opening grille. It looks very similar to the Ford Edge, version of the grille. Now this one has got that satin chrome because it is the platinum trim level. You can go with the ST model if you want the darker grille and that kind of a thing. But the next thing I want to show you is the hood itself. Notice that on that 19 model it has a clamshell hood where the hood lines come over and down into the fender. So as you can kind of see what I'm talking about right here, this is the line I'm referring to. And what happens is it's almost like a, a, a clamshell hood. That's what I mean by that. Notice that on this hood, the hood lines are on top of it. So when you step back from the side, it's got, it cleans up the lines of the vehicle a lot. In fact, that's one of the reasons that Ford Motor Company, all of their promo shots, they're taking from almost the exact same angle that our camera is sitting at right now. It is a beautiful vehicle if you look at it in the, in the right dimensions. Now, next thing I wanna show you is the, the front bumper. Notice how this front bumper kind of comes out right here and they do that as an optical illusion. They do that so that way it makes the vehicle look wider even though it is not. It has almost the exact same dimensions and so a very very nice piece that you need to note. Now down here you do have the unpainted plastic on the lower rear valence which is good in case you hit a curb or something like that but you've also got the sensors in the front and you've also got the 360 camera right here. Now another nice thing about that is built into that is an actual washer so that way you can wash the bugs off of the vehicle and off the camera as you're driving down the interstate just in case it gets clogged up it's really really nice every time you use the windshield wiper fluid it also cleans that front lens so a very very cool thing now the next thing i want to show you is the actual profile uh, so as you come around from this side you'll notice that the actual length of the vehicle is almost identical to the previous version of the explorer however i want to point out to you is that they've taken these wheels and they've pushed them a lot farther forward on the vehicle and the reason they did that is for a couple of different reasons you know mini coupe Super BMW, they, they say that, you know, the, that it's the ultimate driving machine. And the reason for that is they push those wheels all the way out. It gives it a wider stance, more stable of a stance, and it really makes the handling feel a lot better. Now keep in mind, so they push the wheels all the way forward that they could um, compared to the previous version. And you've also got the engine that probably starts, if I had to guess, about right here. We'll look at that here in just a second. And so they were able to push the wheels forward, the engine back, and it helps with that weight distribution. That's one of the reasons this thing is going to drive so much better than that previous version, which is a front wheel drive where the motor is all the way to the forward to the front and almost sitting directly on top of that motor, or on top of the wheels rather. So the next thing I want to show you on the profile side of the vehicle is this. This belt line is much more pronounced coming all the way through. And they did that as a uh, obviously a, a design cue to make the thing look a lot different. And that's one of the reasons that all of Ford's shots are coming from that certain angle is to highlight this belt line but the other thing that they're highlighting is the actual roof line here behind the third row seat so as the camera is sitting right there you can see that the 2020 slopes off and it tapers off in the rear much more so than that previous version 2019 model I think it looks fantastic. You'll notice that the overall he uh, the tail lamp housing looks similar to the previous version. It does have a different shape, but you can see that it has uh, very uh, it has a lot of similarities there. The nice thing about this vehicle is that it looks enough like an Explorer that you know it's an Explorer without having to have it badged. And I do like that because there's nothing really wrong with the way that this one looks. 
the previous version. I really like the way this one looks, especially the more I get to see it. This is the second or third one that I've seen uh, in person. And trust me, you need to see what it looks like in person before you make your, your judgment because this thing looks fantastic. A lot of the technology that's already on the 19 Explorer has been carried over to the 2020 model. We're going to get into some more of that here in just a second. But I just kind of want to showcase the rear of the vehicle and showcase how nice the, the, that vehicle looks all the way around. So next up, let's do this. Let's go ahead and show you a little bit about the different trim levels that you have available and then we're going to jump on the inside and show you what you have there. But before we jump into that, I do want to show you a really neat quirk and feature on this vehicle for you Doug DeMiro fans. So let's take a look at this exhaust real, real quick. In the previous version of the Explorer, there were some cases that there was some exhaust recirculating. Notice that there is no exhaust coming out of the tip itself, but rather it actually exits below the actual tip itself. By shooting the exhaust down instead of out, it keeps that exhaust from recirculating behind the vehicle and sucking it back into the air conditioner. So a very, very neat information that you need to know that if now that you know, you just can't unlearn that. That is absolutely insane that Ford did this on the new 2020 model. The Ford Explorer is America's all-time best-selling SUV. In fact, it started this segment and they've sold over 8 million vehicles since inception. And in fact, if you want some more information about this vehicle, you could probably reach out to your local dealers as the ordering banks are already open. But let's talk about the trim levels first off. The, the first trim that you have is the base model and it's going to start at $33,800. The XLT picks up a couple of cool features that I'll list right there on the screen and it actually starts for just a little bit more than that. The Limited starts at $49,225 and you get a lot of new technology that was not standard in the previous version. That's the reason for the price increase. And lastly, you've got the ST and the Platinum. Those start at $55,835 for the ST, which is a significant jump, but once again, you're getting a lot more customization and a lot more options right off the bat. Let's talk about the engines themselves. The first thing that you notice is you actually have to hit the hood release twice to get it to pop the hood. I guess that's a new safety feature, but you'll also notice that there is no hood latch, which I thought that was pretty neat. And that's kind of the reason behind that. Now keep in mind, this is a pre-production prototype. So as it comes to market, that feature may be changed, but that's what we're looking at today. Now, first off, let's talk about the engine. This one has one of the big daddy engines. So before we talk about this engine, let's take a step back and talk about the base engine. The base engine is a 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine, which makes a ton of power. I mean, it's a lot of power for what it is. 300 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, and it can tow 5,300 pounds when properly equipped. The 3.0 liter, that's a V6, and it's rated for 365 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque, and it can tow 5,600 pounds. Lastly, the ST, that's obviously the sport version of this engine, and it makes 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. But lastly, let's talk about what's available in the limited model and that is going to be the hybrid variant. That hybrid makes 318 horsepower and 336 pound-feet of torque. And here's the cool part about that, and this is not to bash Toyota Highlander, but the Toyota Highlander very specifically states in their owner's manual that this vehicle is not intended for off-road use and it's not intended for towing nearly what this version of the hybrid Explorer is able to tow. Now let's talk about that hybrid version for just a second because there's a lot of information that we took in today about that specific engine. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the engines, all of them, everything is now a rear wheel drive. And so now all of our vehicles get a rear wheel drive, 10 speed automatic transmission. And so being that, what you have is you have the engine that's gonna be sitting right here, the transmission, and then if it's a four wheel drive, the transfer case, and then it disperses the power, right? But in the hybrid, where are you gonna put the electric motor? Ford ingeniously has mated the electric motor inside the transmission casing. So the hybrid version is inside of the transmission. It's technology that is way smart. People way smarter than me are making this up, but um, it is really neat engineering to see that. And that 10 speed transmission is one of the reasons this hybrid version can, can tow so much weight versus most of the hybrids have a CVT, a continuously varying transmission inside of it. That 10 speed makes a big difference. One of the things I forgot to mention in that last little segment is fuel economy. At the time that we're cutting this video, the fuel economy numbers have not been released. However, Ford 
Ford is telling us that that hybrid version is going to have a 500 mile range, which is impressive because my wife has a previous gen Explorer and the fuel range on it is terrible. Now the gas mileage is good, the miles per gallon is good, but the tank is so small you can't go anywhere uh, for long, long trips. Now that hybrid 500 miles on a tank of gas is going to go a long way, so I'm very excited about that. A couple of things I want to show you before we look at the inside of the vehicle is on the outside. These have adaptive headlamps where the headlamps are stationary. These don't move, but the beam of light can actually wrap around corners. It can turn so that way if you're taking a tight turn, you can see around the corner. It's a really, really nice technology. And now the next thing I want to talk about are these tires on the ST model and the Explorer Platinum. You have a self-sealing tire and I'm looking for the logo for that right now. Where did they go? There it is right there. So self-sealing tire. This is a 255-55 R20, but it is really neat that if you get a nail in the tire, it will ha it has a membrane on the inside of the tire itself where it will seal up and that way you can have nail holes. It's kind of a thing of the past. It'll continue to hold air uh, as long as you don't hit something massive. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the vehicle. Now keep in mind, this is the Platinum model. So you're getting a lot of features on this one that you're not gonna be getting on the XLT. You're not gonna be getting on the, on the Limited, but let's talk about it nonetheless. The first thing I wanna showcase to you are the seats themselves. These have the active contour seats, but they're an enhanced version of it. So in the past, you on the Platinum, you'd have the uh, massaging seats is what some people call it. It's tiny little air bladders all around the, the seat itself that inflate and deflate and they do that in different areas so that way it massages your butt and your back. Now this one has a version of that where now you can actually have that on forever. The previous version of these enhanced or, or these seats would only massage your butt and your back for 15 minutes. I don't know why, but after 15 minutes, you'd have to turn it on again. This version, it will stay on as long as you are on your actual drive. It'll continue to do it. And the other thing is you can also now uh, enhance the, the amount of pressure that is actually using to massage your seat and your massage your back. Now let's talk about a couple of other new enhancements of the actual vehicle itself. You'll notice you have an entirely different center console here. You, this little transmission shifter, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, thing started so we can get a little bit of air conditioner. We're in Alabama, it is not cold. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what I want to talk about is this button that is located right here. This is an enhanced park assist 2.0 and basically what happens is this vehicle can completely parallel park itself without ever touching the transmission the brake or the gas pedal all of it is is taken care of all you have to do is click and hold that button and the vehicle will automatically change it from drive to reverse control the brake control the gas everything you don't have to worry about that anymore two other cool features down here that I want to showcase to you are these two buttons that I didn't know what either one of them did so this this button turns out is called auto hold and so as you come to a stop sign or a stop light and you have to sit there for 30 or 45 seconds as long as this is turned on you can let your foot off the brake and the vehicle will hold you exactly where you are until you come in and hit the gas and so if you're at line at chick-fil-a or whatever restaurant drive through restaurant you're going to that is a really cool feature i i'm going to really really enjoy that now this feature right here this is kind of a screwy looking button but what that is that is the new traction control button so if you tap that button your normal traction control will come off automatically and you can do what you expect out of uh, the traction control but if you didn't know what that button is now you know now up here I want to talk about the actual climate control so you have now for the 2020 model you have dual climate control but you also have the rear climate control and here this is thank you Ford for finally putting a rear button on so that way you can adjust it with just one quick button you can get to where you need to and adjust the rear climate that is one thing that the previous version of the Explorer did not have that was very very frustrating to me I want to kind of go back down here for just a second and showcase to you the port that you have for your vehicle itself. You have always had the USB port, but now you also happen to have the USB-C port along with the normal side of a power outlet plug right there. So you've got plenty of opportunities to keep your stuff 
uh, very, very well taken care of. So I'm gonna plug this USB stick back in here uh, to showcase the next feature, and that is going to be on that 10.1 inch screen in the center stack. What I wanna showcase to you is the actual uh, center screen right here. I've had a lot of people say, you know what, I think it should have been landscape instead of vertical. And uh, after I, you know, kind of seeing the demonstration of it, I completely understand why they went this route versus a different way. And the idea there is not only do you have the ability to look at the, you just have more options. You can have your radio up here. You can look at your navigation on a full screen. You can do 3D. You can change it around. It's just a very nice version of what you're looking at. You do have the ability to do a split screen there. And so I love this. This screen is only available on the Platinum and the ST included inside of the premium technology package. And trust me, that package is definitely worth it. You've got a button right here where you can look at the 360 degree view of what's in front of you. You can look at what's behind you as you move into reverse. It's very, very easy to use and very, very premium looking, and it should be. Now, next up, I wanna talk about the steering wheel itself. Notice the steering wheel is completely different for this version, but I also wanna showcase to you what is behind that, and that is going to be the, uh, the instrument cluster. That is a 12-inch LCD screen that allows you to control everything on the vehicle. And so as you move this thing into different sport mode and drive modes, as you can see, it, 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 it's just very intuitive. And look at how premium this thing looks. I'm very, very pleased with the amount of technology and nice premium, the, the premium feel is just fantastic. I, I just props to Ford. Now the next thing I want to do as we look back at this steering wheel is I want to talk about the adaptive cruise control. So as you have here, right here, that is the adaptive cruise control button. Now it is a version of the adaptive cruise control that still can completely bring the vehicle to a stop. Uh, not a problem. But this adaptive cruise control is so intelligent, it can read the speed limit signs and you can adjust your speed based on positive or negative the speed limit so let's say that if the vehicle notices the um, the actual uh, speed limit is 70 miles an hour I can say hey I want to set it to 77 I want to I want to do seven miles above whatever the speed limit is or, or I want to do two miles under whatever the speed limit is you have that ability to adjust it and it will automatically configure it for there now one of the things that I was really impressed with was the ability to actually see the difference between a speed limit sign and a, the, between that and also the the minimum speed on the interstate. I was thinking for sure that if it sees that sign, it's going to slam me down to 40 miles an hour on the interstate because it saw it thought that was the speed limit. No, the system is smart enough that it can actually tell the difference between the two. So now without further ado, although you can see all of the new nice touch points in here are fantastic, I want to take a second and move to that back seat. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump back there. On the inside of the back seat, you'll notice there's a lot more room in the new Explorer and a couple of reasons for that. We talked a little earlier about pushing those wheels farther forward. The engine's a little bit further forward than the previous version. And what that's done is it allowed for a lot more room in this second row. Once again, that is the one big pain point that I have in my wife's 2017 Explorer is this leg room right here. And as you can see, I've got the seats moved a little forward, but not all the way. A human would be perfectly fine driving the vehicle where this seat is. Now I want to showcase to you a little bit is um, this is really interesting. Ford no longer allows for the bench seat unless you pay extra for it. In the past it came with the bench seat and then you would pay extra to get the captain's chairs. Now on XLTs and above they all come with the captain's chairs in the rear automatically and if you want the bench seat you can get it you just have to pay $4.95 for the option. And I'm sorry for the noise, the construction back there. We're in the middle of our massive re renovation here at our dealership, which is Town & Country Ford. Uh, so if you want some more information about our dealership, uh, we've got the website right there and you can kind of see what the dealership's going to look like when it's all said and done. Or if you just want more information about the Explorer, feel free to give us a call. We'll be happy to help you spec your next Explorer. But I want to talk about in the center console here, every one of these center consoles, this thing is beefy. It's got plenty of opportunity for a kid to step on this as they walk through because you got to think, a kid's not going to fold the seat forward, which is really nice. You hit a button and the thing automatically folds forward where you can get back there. Or if you want to, you can press the lever 
and just fold the seat completely flat, which is really, really nice for our next feature or our next trick, I guess you could call it. I wanna move this back to showcase one last thing. Look at how thick this armrest is in the center in the second row. Usually when you have a second row armrest, it's gonna be a real dinky, skinny one, not so here. Now, just like the previous version of the Explorer, you still have the air conditioner controls in that second row. You also happen to have the USB-C and the power outlet here. And thankfully, they also have the household power outlet plug, which comes in really in handy if you wanted to plug in your PlayStation right here. You can do that and actually play PlayStation on the DVD headrest that you have located right there. In fact, those headrests, you can also watch your sling player, your sling TV while you're driving down the road because this vehicle also happens to have a hotspot where you can connect 10 devices through AT&T's uh, network system. And it's just really, really neat the amount of technology that they have in this particular vehicle. It's almost too much to cover in one single video. Without further ado, I tell you what, you guys probably want to see what I look like in that third row seat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the button. I'm going to get back there myself just so you guys can see it. Now, keep in mind, I am six foot three and I am not a small individual. Now, as you can see, there's not tons of room back here, but you have the ability to slide the seat forward and back. So if, I'm, if I've got three people or three rows worth of people, I can have this seat scooted forward like it is right now versus this one that's scooted back. So that way everybody can be comfortable. Now, am I gonna wanna spend seven hours in, this, in the back of this thing? Probably not but you definitely could do it. Once again, I'm six foot three and you can see my head's not touching the ceiling and I feel relatively comfortable back here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the cargo space. I feel like David Copperfield for a second. Nothing in my hands. Kick. Ha. <laughs> That is called the hands-free lift gate. So as long as you have the key in your pocket, in your purse, whatever you want to, if you make a kicking motion towards the center of the, uh, the vehicle itself, it'll automatically open and close that, that tail, uh, tailgate. But I'm gonna show you a really neat feature on that here in just a second. Before we do that, I do wanna show you that everything limited and above has got a power third row seat. And so the buttons are gonna be located right here. And so you can actually hit the button and it will automatically fold that third row seat completely flat. And as you stay right there, you can see that not only does that third row seat fold completely flat, but so does the second row seats. So that way you have the ability to have a ton of cargo space in the back of this Explorer. Now, I wanna to showcase to you that this vehicle also happens to have something that is different from the previous version of the Explorer. Notice how the cup holders are located down here where they used to be up here. They moved those down lower for a very good reason. Now you've got 48 inches across from side to side. You literally could put a, a sheet of plywood in the back of your Explorer width-wise and not have any issues with it fitting on the width side. You may have some issues with the link side, but you have the ability for a ton of cargo space in this particular vehicle. And notice how that this, this load floor is nice and low. The reason for that is because it does have independent rear suspension as well as front suspension. And the ST model even has a sport tuned version of that independent suspension system. And there you have it. That is our full walk around video of the new 2020 Ford Explorer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you're feeling like being awesome, smash that thumbs up button. If you need more information about this vehicle itself, make sure to hit us up. Our phone number is right there on the screen. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. We'll be happy to help you with your next Explorer order. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day.